need you all to hear what I'm saying. Success is a plan that takes years in the making. When nobody did, I believe. I had to let go of things I did not need. Cut off some friends in the process. What could I say? I could no longer carry the dead weight. Get off your ass. There's lots you can do. You want to learn something and watch how I move. But they don't want to do shit. They want to be spoon fed like a little baby. That shit is crazy, boy. Change up your mindset. I get three days worth of work done in just one. Seven, two, seven. Mindset is the hustle for us. You get it? I'm Alex Corona. And I'm Jamie Burks. Welcome to the 727 Podcast. And today, we're talking about credit. Not street credit. We're talking about credit. How do you find out what kind of credit you have? You even have credit. Where do I go? Who do I talk to? So every single year, you are able to ask for a free credit bureau from this place called the annualcreditreport.com. So you're able to get a credit report from each of your credit bureaus, the Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian. What about Credit Karma? Credit Karma, you know, it's a guide. Nobody really is paying for it. So it kind of tells you what you want to know. It is important you get if yourself an app that tells you exactly what's going on so that way you can see if you're behind on any bills. It's not as accurate as you'd like it to be, so it's very important that you get your annual credit report. Also, every bureau that gets ran, every platform that you can check, runs in a different way. So when you check your credit with Credit Karma, that may be Experian or Equifax. If you go to a car dealership, that's one kind of credit report. If you go to a mortgage lender, there's another. Contact TransUnion directly, there's another one. So just because your score is one thing in one bureau does not mean it's gonna be the same every single time. You know, we're getting right on to it because we have a lot of appointments today and I want you guys to get as much information as possible from us. It, let's face it, if you don't have credit, it's gonna be difficult to get anything. You know, you gotta really settle for whatever somebody's willing to give you. You're paying high interest rates. You're not gonna be able to get the car you want. You're not gonna be able to get the place you want. And it's going to cost a lot of money if they do give you these places. If you like paying 30% and 300%. Or not give it to you. They could just say no. There's a lot of competition out there. And in a perfect world, we would not be judged on how we look on paper. But that's exactly what it is. It's very easy to figure out if somebody's going to pay you or not. Just by looking at your credit report. That's your name. So when they run your credit and they see that you're behind on a $20 credit card bill or a $30 credit card bill, or you didn't pay your cell phone bill and it's in collections, it's going to be a real easy decision not to give you what you want to get. So they're not going to give you that rental. I wouldn't rent to you. You know, it's going to be very difficult for our landlords to rent to you. If you can't pay something small, how are you going to pay something big? If you let your credit get away from you and you're in the low 400s or in the 300s, going to be tough. You know, you're going to need a bulletproof vest wherever you're going to be living. Credit actually is one of those things that not totally impossible to get because you need credit to get credit. Well, how do I get credit if I don't have credit? But one thing's for sure, if you pay something late or don't pay it at all, it is so hard to recover from that. And it takes a lot more time. So the good thing is, is to know or have a credit professional take a look at what you do have established or lack thereof so they can direct you the right way. You guys come into our office we don't charge to do credit checks. You know, we don't charge an application fee. And it doesn't matter what your situation is. We always have a game plan. It doesn't matter what you're behind on, you know, who you owe money to. We have a game plan on how you could get yourself back on track. You know, if you owe the IRS, if you are behind in child support, if, you know, do you owe student loans, it doesn't matter what's going on. We can walk you through the process on how to get you back on track, going in the right direction. But it's very important that you don't get behind on these things. The second you start feeling that you're not gonna be able to pay something, reach out to whoever it is, whether it's the landlord or it's one of these credit cards, you never know what they might be able to work out with you. Especially nowadays, after the pandemic, there's all kinds of programs to help you to not let these things happen. Once you get behind, it's very difficult to get ahead. And I see a lot of people come in here filing bankruptcy when they really don't need to or because they got a few tickets or something very simple that they could have fixed if they just stayed on top of it. And I just got off the phone with one of my friends. He said that some tenants were behind on their rent. They showed up to their, his office and at least they're in communication. You know, it's, when you go dark on someone and you ghost them and you know, you're not answering your phone when the bill collectors are calling, 
that's when the, the issues start getting really serious. And if you just let it go and you think, oh, I'll just bury my head in the sand and this will all go away, it's just getting worse by the minute. So very important to get that annual credit report. Again, it is annualcreditreport.com. It's very important you look through there because 25 to 35% of credit reports have mistakes. So you wanna look through there. There's a lot of scamming going on. They could do identity thief in your past and making you know loans and credit cards in your name and getting cars and you don't even know that this is happening. So it's very important that you look at your credit report. You see if there's any mistakes. If you see mistakes, you reach out to these places immediately. Find out how you can contact them, how you can reach out to them, send them a letter, send them a smoke signal, call them. Even if you have to go there, it's important to get these things removed off your credit. The best advice you gave is just don't ignore it, but also understand that it takes a little bit of time for uh, your the trade lines to report to the credit bureau. It actually takes 30 days. So if you're late on a car payment or a credit card payment or what have you, they'll have your little grace period, then I'll get your late fee, but the bureaus are not gonna receive it, assuming that they do re report to all of them, they're not gonna receive that until 30 days after. So by the time clients come in here and they have had late bills that are on there, if it shows up on their bureaus, it's because it's been over 30 days. And that is the one thing for sure. There's nothing that you can do, whether it's get approved for more credit, get approved for a rental, get approved through a home, if they're past due. Past due, you have to get current. That is just, there's no negotiating with that whatsoever. Their only loophole with that is if it's super old. We've had clients come in here that have had collections. Now, if it reaches a collection company, it's because it's been weeks to months and could be even years. If collections are on there, you're not totally knocked out of the water for, for purchasing. You actually can purchase a home uh, with collections on your account that are a nominal amount, meaning small. So as long as there's a small amount that's owed, there is a possibility that you still can. What happens is that people think, or they're told, oh, you just have to pay everything off in full, but that's not always the case. I've sold houses to people that had $1,500 in credit and collections that were owed. In fact, if they were to start making payments on those collections after they already started to do positive things on their credit, their score would then actually suffer more. So again, talk to your credit professionals and someone who's going to run it that could direct you the right way. So like Jamie was saying, if you have things in collections. It's not the end of the world. After seven years, these things fall off. I have a lot of people that stop in our office and they just completely stop using their credit. They tell me their credit score, or sometimes when it's in the 400s, low 500s, it just means you stopped using your credit. You're not no longer using it. That doesn't mean it's the end of the world. It's really easy to get your credit back on track. There's a thing called an authorized user. And an authorized user is, for instance, let's say Jamie has a credit card and I ask Jamie, hey Jim, you know, my credit's in the dumps. You know, if I try to apply for a credit card, they're obviously not gonna give it to me. But if I ask her if she can add me on to one of her credit cards, and the bigger the credit limit and the lesser the balance, the more it's gonna work. So she adds me on to one of her credit cards, she pulls it out, she calls the number on the back of the card and lets them know my information. And she doesn't have to give me the card or the account number. It's just so I could piggyback off of her credit. And if she could add me like two, three of them, that'd be amazing. Or if she only has one, my other friend has one, my other friend has one. Again, that's all gonna help. It's gonna help bypass the negative by adding some positive and get my score going in the right direction. And you'd be surprised how high sometimes these credit scores go. We've had people jump up two, 300 points in 30 days, 45 days. So it's an easy way to get your credit back on track. And I've had, I, can, I can't even tell you how many examples we've had where that's happened. I was gonna say, as a card holder, I was very strategic when I've done this. I take Alex's name, I take his date of birth, I take his social, but when I pop in his address, I put in my home address, why? Because I don't want Alex ever seeing the card to use it. Not that he would, but if I put it in that way, when the card comes to me, then we know that that card is gonna start reporting to the bureau. So really, they're just benefiting, well, Alex in this case was just benefiting from me making the payment. It is more effective if I have a high limit, let's say I have a $3,000 credit limit, but I only owe $50 on it. 
that is the way that you want to go. You don't want to add yourself to a card where there's a $3,000 limit and they owe $2,900. That's essentially going to do nothing. So make sure that you can always put your own address in there as the card holder. And then once they're done or once their credit is into a situation that they're able to make some moves, you could just simply call the credit card company and remove them as an authorized user. And you're absolutely done. We had a client that had came in and she was actually in the 400s for credit, but she had a dad that was over 800. So we asked if the dad would be willing to put her on as authorized users. It literally took three and a half weeks to get her score over 700. She did three authorized users, and then instead of renting a home, she purchased a home. The nice thing about the credit and the lower scores, meaning uh, 400s or real low 500s, that score with the right moves can go up super fast, actually much faster than a 580 or 590 would. It all depends. It's very important that you get current on whatever's going on at the moment. If you're behind on a credit card and it's happening right now, you've got to get that card current before you get added on those authorized users. Otherwise, your credit's going to go like this. So it's very important you get current, especially if it's a small balance that you owe or you know, a small payment that you got to get in. It's always important to call the credit card companies and ask them, hey, what do I owe to get myself current? So that way you don't think, you know, you're paying the minimum payment and it's not getting you current. Some people think that, oh, you know, I owe $40, but you forgot about the fees. Very important to give them a call. Same thing with your car payment. I hear it all the time. I heard somebody tell me this this morning. They said, oh, I'm, I'm current with my car payment. Really? Because I just ran your credit and it shows that you're two months behind. So I don't know what he's thinking, but, you know, he has to call the, the bank and ask them, how much do I need to pay? to get myself current. That way you can stop the bleeding and then get added on to those authorized users. And that's also the easiest way to get credit. So let's say you don't have credit. You, I don't have any credit. How do I get the credit? Easiest way to do it. Get added on to somebody's authorized users. You can do it for your kids. So that way they can start building some credit. You can do it for whoever you want to help. And again, with Jamie's strategy where you don't put their address, you put your address. So that way they mail it to you. And when it comes, you can chop it up and. No one will ever know it came. And again, you don't have to give them the account number. You don't give them the card. You don't, it's not for them to use. It's just for you to help them get credit on track or to get some credit. But it's the easiest way. It doesn't matter if they have an ITIN, a DACA, whatever. You add them onto that card and watch the magic happen. The next easiest step to do is to get a secured credit card. You know, what I found of the best cards that there are out there that are secured credit cards is called the Discover It's Secured. You can apply for that after you get the authorized users, or you can apply if you don't have any credit. What I've seen lately is if your credit is not the best, it's got some bruises, they won't give it to you, but you can go to your own bank, whatever bank that you're dealing with, and apply for one there. As long as you get one, a uh, secured card works like your, your own bank or your own credit, and you could put as little as 200 on the card, you have to leave that deposit, and I've seen about as high as 1,000. So obviously the more you put on that card, the more credit you have. After about six, eight months, sometimes a year, they'll give you back that deposit. You can use it here and there. Every time you use it, you gotta replenish it. So, so it's like paying the bill first. Yes, but it reports to your credit. So after a while, you'll be able to get that deposit back. You're able to apply for other cards. You'll be able to get more credit and the credit limit will also start going up. The one thing about the Discover card, if that's the only avenue that you have to establish credit, if you get approved for it because you don't have anything derogatory on there, it does take a few months, a little bit of time to start reporting to the bureaus. So really partnering it up with the authorized users and the Discover secured credit card, your score can really move so much within just a few weeks. Uh, the reason why we like Discover is because Discover, a secured credit card, does what's called off-cycle reporting. There is a day of the month that every credit card reports to the bureaus, it's all depending on what bureaus they report to, but you can call Discover Secured Credit Card, and, or any Discover card for that matter, and ask them, hey, can you do an off-cycle reporting? The first one that they do is for free. Everyone after they do, in order to get whatever you're trying to report on there, I think it's a $50 charge. Another thing that you can do is with whatever bank you're banking with or credit unions, you could get a small personal loan to start building some credit. So you start paying it back, you know, it could be, you know, thousand bucks, $500, whatever it is, you could start building some credit that way. Very important, you know, put it on your calendar, set a reminder days even before the bill is due. Do not go past that date. It's stupid to pay fees 
I see it all the time. I, I look at people's bank statements and it's, you know, NSFs, you know, not sufficient funds. They're not, they don't have the money to pay the checks that they're sending out. They're paying their credit cards late. And th sometimes the minimum payment is actually less than the fees that they're charging. So, I mean, it doesn't don't make any sense. It. Yes. Do not ignore it. <laughs> I see it all the time, even with people paying rent. They're late fees, 10% every single month. So it adds 10% to the rent. And sometimes it's $2,000 and another 10%, you're paying another 200 bucks on top of it. It's, it doesn't make any sense to me. Especially, you know, maybe you can talk to the landlord and say, hey, can we change the date? I get paid this day. There's always ways to do things if you communicate. Very important, communication is the key. Another thing, a lot of clients come into our office and the very first thing that they, when we ask them, are you looking to rent or are you looking to buy? They say, you know what, I'm working my, I just want to rent for now because I'm working on my credit. And that is the one thing that to us, it actually sounds a little funny because landlords do want to really screen these tenants for lots of different reasons. They're exhausted from COVID. They're exhausted from rental assistance. They're exhausted from waiting. They just want to get their rent paid timely. That is really the only thing that they want. So when clients come in and they say, no, I'm working on my credit. I just want to rent for now. It doesn't make much sense. So we need to take a look at everything so we can get them in the right direction. So what does Jamie mean by it doesn't make much sense? The landlords are not trying to rent to you. They're not trying to uh, rent to you while you work on your credit for not paying your bills. It doesn't make any sense. They come in here and they're like, I'm, I'm just looking to rent. I'm not looking to buy. Right now, it's actually easier to buy a home than to rent. After the pandemic, so many people did not pay their bills, did not pay their rent, that the landlords are terrified of what they're putting in. We've never got so many rentals ever as it is now. Constantly, I just got three yesterday, I got like two more today. It's constant uh, people coming in here looking to find the right tenant and they're terrified. They're like, okay, who's renting around here? Who's the clientele? Who's this, who is that? Don't worry, that's the easy part. We'll find them a good tenant, somebody that's got a lot to lose and they're looking for 700 plus credit. So if you don't have 700 plus credit, it's gonna get really expensive on application fees. And other people are not as nice as us. We're the only place out there that I've heard at least that doesn't charge an application fee. They charge us $45 a person. You can imagine what my credit running bill looks like every single month. It's not cheap. They charge us $45 a person, sometimes two, three, four, five of them come in. Right off the bat, I'm spending 250 on you know one person, one little group of people that are coming through the door to see what it is that we can do for them, what's the best packet we can put together for them, and what's the game plan. It doesn't. It's not how it used to be. Here's the money. Here's the keys. That is long gone. If you want to live in a bad neighborhood, that still exists. But if you want one of these nicer neighborhoods, nicer properties. There's hundreds of applications coming through the door. You're in competition with a lot of people. So if you're not taking care of your credit or you're behind on something currently, good luck. It's not gonna work. Get out of that old school train of thought where other generations say, I don't need credit, I don't use credit, I pay everything cash because no one wants to rent or buy to you by you saying I promise to pay. They wanna see that you've actually done that. So actually pay attention to your credit, don't, don't ignore it. You need to have credit, you need to have something so that way you have way more options and decisions that you can make of things that you want and you're not gonna have an issue. So like I was saying earlier, you know, if you have something on your credit that's old, I have tons of people that tell me, you know, I have a bankruptcy from seven years ago, eight years ago, 10 years ago. I stopped paying my car note seven years ago. My car got repoed years ago. You'd be surprised. A lot of the bad things, like I said, after seven years, they fall off your credit like it was a bad dream and the good things stayed. I'm a prime example. So I had some big amount of drama and I had all kinds of things going on. You know, she ranked my credit cards up over and over and over to the hill. To the not me. Not no, me. no. <laughs> not, not Just for clarification. Yeah. So um, I did everything I could to try to pay these cards down. And every time I did, she had the account number. She knew my social. She knew my birthday. She knew every single thing that she needed to know to open up more cards, to rack them up to the hill, go on any website and use them all up and to the point where I couldn't pay him anymore. So, and I'm talking about 20, 30, 50,000 on some of these cards where I didn't pay him back yet. I got my car repoed I, to the point where I couldn't even pay the payment. I had to give it back. And 
I stopped using my credit. We were just using Jamie's credit for many, many years. And I had a client walk through the door. She moved out of the country. She thought she was never gonna come back. And she did something very similar. She racked up all her cards. She thought, hey, I'm not coming back. And that, when she told me, hey, I know my credit's terrible. I've been gone for eight years. I, you know, used up all my credit. I knew I wasn't coming back and I took all the money out and I took it with me. But we ran her credit and lo and behold, she was over 700. So that kind of, you know, and I heard it before that after seven years, it just falls off your credit. But I thought to myself, does that really happen? I mean, here's a prime example. This happened right in front of me. So the lady leaves and I decide, well, let me run my credit. Let me see, let me see what's going on here. And sure enough, over 700. I couldn't even believe it. I didn't use my credit for like nine years. Not one single thing that I even bother running it or ever looking at it because I thought, hey, it's shot. There's nothing I can do with it. So I still didn't believe it. So I applied for a credit card immediately. I was like, let me see. Boom, they gave it to me. I was like, what? Let me do it all. Something must be wrong. Bam, they gave it to me. I couldn't even believe it. So I called Jamie. I said, Jamie, you'll never believe what happened. My credit's 700 plus. And I just applied for two cards. They gave them to me. And here I am back where I need to be right now. Currently, I'm actually, you know, my credit's pretty low because I'm, again, to the hilt with debt. I uh, bought a bunch of homes. We're doing a bunch of rehabs at the same time. And I am funding it with my own cash. And it's been Best a hell of a ride. Oh, yeah. So thank God I'm not behind on anything. You know, everything's moving along just right. Just a couple days ago, I posted a picture of my car on a truck on a, on a flatbed. And I uh, was just messing around. And I said it was, you know, getting uh, repoed. Thank God it really wasn't. And um, that's how they do it. I'm pretty sure they just take it away and tow truck. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. At least when I gave my car back, I just gave it back. I didn't even want them to come and get it. I knew I couldn't make the payment. I went and dropped it off at the dealer and gave it back. But that's how it happens. I, I saw it happen the other day at the gym. I was at the gym and the tow truck was taking the guy's car at the gym while he was inside. I seen him run out. He's like, trying to talk to the guy. The guy don't give a damn. He's there to do his job. He doesn't bring the car back. He doesn't get paid. So. It's sad. So it's, talk to somebody. I know what to do. But if it's something old, don't worry. Or it's something that's close to seven years. It's very important that you don't pay money that you don't have to. So like we were talking about earlier, a lot of times when you pay collections or you pay charge offs, your credit actually goes down because now you have less credit. I know it doesn't make any sense because when you get these calls from your bill collectors and they say, hey, I see you owe $10,000. You give me a hundred bucks and we'll call it a day. Well, now you have $10,000 less credit. Even though that $10,000 was in collections, it's still $10,000 more credit. So you're acknowledging that you owe it. And now it's like, okay, now that you're acknowledging that you owe the debt here, we're going to put this on there that it's like fresh debt. Once you have $10,000 more credit, you pay off that hundred bucks and now it's closed out. Now you have $10,000 less credit. That's why it's very important to get yourself with a credit professional to explain these things to you before you start spending money that you don't have to, or especially on something that's old, and especially something that's over seven years old, because there is still companies that will try to collect on those things. But you know, at this point, you don't have to pay. If you guys have any questions, again, make sure that you guys go on the website. It's called www.annualcreditreport.com. You can get every single year, you can get a free credit report. Go through it, see if there's any mistakes. Like I was saying earlier, 25 to 35% of credit reports have some type of mistake. And it's very important if you start disputing things that you follow through with it. Because once you dispute something, it starts showing on your credit that you disputed it. And a lot of times you just leave it and that makes it even worse. When people run the credit and they see that you disputed something and they see, oh wow. And then it says they did an investigation and creditor says that you are still responsible for it. I forgot how it's worded, but it says something like that on your credit report. Now, when they look at your credit report, they say, oh, well, okay. So this person borrowed this money, didn't pay it back, and now they're saying it wasn't that. Take responsibility. You know, Don't start something and not finish it. So if you're gonna start disputing something, you're gonna have to dispute it month after month after month until that stuff gets removed. And if you have your credit report and you don't know how to read it or something doesn't make sense, uh, give us a call. And if we can't answer your question, we know someone who will. Definitely. We know a few people that specialize in credit repair. They'll get your credit going. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time. Sometimes it's a lot quicker. So 
Don't be afraid to do something about it. Don't just sit there and not do anything about it. And if you guys have any questions, please reach out to us anytime. You can send me a DM, you can send me a, you can call me 708-925-2352, send a smoke signal, whatever it is, stop in our office. We'll get you guys going in the right direction. Get that credit. Peace. You guys have a good one, man. We'll see you next time. 727 Podcast. If you guys have anybody that might need to hear this, make sure you send it to them. You ought to hear what I'm saying. Success is a plan that takes years in the making. When nobody did, I believe. Had to let go of things I did not need. Cut off some friends in the process. What could I say? I could no longer carry the dead weight. Get off your ass. There's lots you can do.